good morning. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each person's heart be acceptable to our Lord, who is our rock and redeemer. Please sit. All around the world, bread is eaten daily, and in many parts of the world, and especially in the ancient world, bread was not an add-on to the meal. It was often the main component of the meal, as meat was scarce. I expect that most of us here in the pews can sit down most days to a, a nice breakfast of juice, eggs, toast, and coffee. But right here in our local community of St. Catharines, people, lots of lives, are hungry, and we have homeless people. Fortunately, our, our wonderful breakfast program offers to all comers a full breakfast any day of the week, all year. But make no mistake, hunger stalks millions of people in every country. When I was a teenager, I dated a fellow whose father had been in a German concentration camp. They were given mostly sawdust to fill their stomachs, as well as perhaps a slice of bread. My boyfriend's father said that he recalled people who had had brawls over a single slice of bread. So the petition, give us this day our daily bread, was more of a hope to those people than an expectation. This boy's father also remembered how the prisoners would cut up the bread into tiny little pieces and make little balls of them. And then individually they would suck and eat each piece to get as much nutrient out of it and to help stem their hunger. In such a situation, bread is indeed essential to physical life, but having Simply physical life is a far diminished life compared to enjoying a full life, including a friendship with God. Now let me set the context for our gospel passage today. At the beginning of chapter six, Jesus had fed 5,000 people with five loaves of bread and two small fish. According to this feat, was, well, this was a miracle. Right after this, the people had wanted to make Jesus their king. The next day, the people found Jesus on the other side of the lake, so they asked him, well, how did you get here? Jesus did not answer their question directly. Instead, he said, you seek me because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Jesus is saying that not all food is alike. Some food nourishes you only for a day, but spiritual bread ensures and endures to give us eternal life. Jesus wanted to move the people's interest from physical food to spiritual food. In our reading this morning, Jesus said about himself, for it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. This image reminds us of Jesus' baptism where God set a seal of approval on Jesus with the words, this is my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. I believe that God setting his seal on Jesus was an act of dedication by which Jesus becomes the Lamb of God who'd willingly sacrifice himself for the salvation of all humans. How did the people respond to what Jesus said? Well, you guessed it. First of all, they were confused. Secondly, they wanted to know, so by what work do we have to perform to get some earthly bread? 
That wasn't what Jesus was talking about. They didn't get his point at all. Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. Jesus' answer brings us to the familiar issue of works versus faith, which Paul highlighted. Paul rightly tells us we do not get to heaven by works, but rather by faith. Faith is required. Jesus says that the physical food that we eat is perishable, but the spiritual food of believing in the divinity of Christ is imperishable. The spiritual food endures forever because, because it transforms humans and gives them eternal life. The same idea had been conveyed earlier in chapter two of John, where Jesus says, what is born of the flesh is flesh, what is born of the spirit is spirit. In the act of believing in Jesus and upon being baptized, we are born anew to eternal life. Let me repeat that. In the act of believing in Jesus and upon being baptized, we are born anew to eternal life. Where Jesus speaks of the feeding of the Israelites in the wilderness, he told the crowd, truly, truly, I say to you, it was not Moses who has given you the bread out of heaven, but it is my Father, it is God, who has given you the true bread out of heaven. Jesus is saying that the bread the people had received at the time of Moses was a foreshadowing of the new bread which Jesus now offers us. Jesus also said, for the bread of God is that which comes down out of heaven. The sentence is equally well translated as, for the bread of God is he who comes down out of heaven and gives life to the world. And this second interpretation is what we have in the Nicene Creed, which we profess. Well, I've been speaking to you about bread, but the sentence is, I am the bread of life. So now I want to talk about the I am part. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. And he meant, he himself is the sustenance of life. Jesus is all we need of life, physical, emotional, and spiritual. I'm sure you can remember from Sunday school days the story of Moses. When God called Moses to go to the people of Israel in slavery, he said, go to the people and tell them that I sent you. And they said, well, who, who, who sent you? Tell them, he said, tell them that Yahweh sent you. God himself informs the people his own personal Hebrew name is Yahweh, the four sacred letters of the, in the Hebrew word. Hebrew does not have separate present and future tenses, so translation depends entirely on context. I am that I am, or I will be that I will be. Many Christians have chosen to refer to God, therefore, as the great I am. Sometimes you'll hear people saying that. In today's New Testament passage, Jesus uses the divine name of Yahweh and refers it to himself. What's more, Jesus has made the same claim more than once. As we'll see in chapter eight, Jesus says, before Abraham was born, I am. Meaning that before Christ voluntarily took on human form, Jesus was present when the world was created. No doubt the crowd was very shocked when Jesus said that. Out of reverence for God's personal and holy name, when Jewish people read the 
Testament, the Old Testament, the Bible, out loud, instead of saying Yahweh, they substitute for the unspeakable personal name of God, Adonai, which means my Lord. After 2,000 years in the Christian civilization, we are no longer su surprised by Jesus' claim. But 2,000 years ago in Israel, Jesus got himself tried for blasphemy for saying this. In today's final verse, Jesus clearly explains to everyone the importance to us of believing his claim. For Jesus says, whomever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. Jesus also expressed that same life-changing thought in John 2. There, Jesus used the metaphor of water, and he said, the water that I will give him will become within him a spring of water leaping up into eternal life. So I ask you, have you asked God for this faith? In Matthew chapter seven, Jesus says, ask and it will be given you, seek and you shall find, knock and the door will be opened. Your, your Father in heaven will give good things to those who ask him. I believe that God is present right here in this church for newcomers as well as those who've attended here for decades alike. People can feel and do feel welcome and cared for in St. George's. This is a safe space, a place to question, a place to study, a place to hear God's word proclaimed, a place where every week bread and wine are offered to strengthen us. St. George's is a place where over time, if we persist in seeking God, we may grow into a mature faith, a faith that responds affirmatively to God's loving invitation. Whomever comes to me will never hunger and whomever believes in me will never thirst. Friends, I wanna leave you with a single question. Do you have a hunger for God? I see some of you nodding. So I say again, are you hungry for God? Good, good. I even heard some bees speak out. When you accept God's loving invitation, you become a friend of God. In the name of the Father and the Son, Holy Spirit, amen.